Welcome back. So this will be Sukkot Day 3 study. And once again, I'm outside. I have to say, this is the first day of fall for America. And um, in California, it does not feel like fall. We were in the 90s again today, so um, supposed to be the end of harvest, but um, I don't know, it's pretty warm still. I did get a new mic for the iPad because some of you were saying it was hard to hear me, so I'm going to hope that this helps. We'll see. All right, so where are we going to go today in our study of Sukkot, Feast of the Tabernacles, or Feast of the Booths, B-O-O-T-H-S, Booth, Feast of Temporary Dwellings. But it's also a Feast of Harvest because it's supposed to be after the harvest, although this year the things are really, really early. So let's talk about calendar. How come it's early this year? Calendars are, for the most part, man's invention. God tells us in Leviticus 23, his calendar, you know, his months, how he wants things celebrated. But man has come up with different calendars throughout the years. So I'm going to take us back to November 11th in the year of um, 1620. Some of you might right off the top of your head know it and others of you are going to go, ah. That was the year that a certain group of religious, I hate that word, people came to America for freedom, to worship God according to scripture, according to the Word of God, the Bible, and not what man said they were to do, or man's changing of days and times. Yep, it was the pilgrims. And they wrote a document called the Mayflower Compact. And the Mayflower Compact was signed on November 11th in 1620, on the Julian calendar. So it's not November 11th for us, because we don't follow or observe the Julian calendar. In the 1700s, 1750-something, um, we switched from the Julian calendar to the Gregorian calendar, which is what most of the world, the Western United States anyway, observes today. There are other calendars, such as the Jewish calendar. So, you know, when we want to observe biblical things, when we want to observe God's feasts and festivals, the smartest thing to do is to follow the Jewish calendar. There are other calendars, not just Gregorian. Other countries follow other calendars, really seriously, you know. That might be different for some of you to, maybe you've never heard that before, but there are several calendars. Um, so anyway, November 21st was the day on the Gregorian calendar that we observe today as being the day that the Mayflower Compact was signed on the Mayflower. And a compact is a covenant. And they made a covenant with God how to set up government. And they based it upon the religious contract they made with him in the Netherlands, or in England, and then the Netherlands, and then America. <laughs> anyway, that's not the point of today's lesson. But the pilgrims still are central to today's lesson. Because when they came, not all of them could come. And one of the ships had to turn back. And there was just so much. They lost over half of those who started on the endeavor to cross the ocean, to come to the Americas. Over half of them died on the journey or through the first winter when they got here because it was harsh. Wow. You would think they'd want to give up. Nope. Nope. They persevered. And so a year later, not quite a year later, at the end of the harvest, they celebrated what we today call the Thanksgiving feast. We don't celebrate it on the day they did. They actually celebrated it at some time between September 21st. <gasps> That's today? Yesterday. Well, we're in September. Somewhere between September and November, they celebrated it. And they celebrated it after the harvest, and they celebrated it for more than one day. Abraham Lincoln changed it 
to a specific Thursday in November, and then it was changed again to the current day we have by a, another president. I'm sorry, I didn't, it, it escapes me right now, but again, not the point. So after the harvest, after they were here almost a year, they had a feast and a festival to give thanks to God Almighty for providing for them, for seeing them through. Even though over half of them died, they were grateful. Wow, can we do that? In the midst of hardship, in the midst of loss, in the midst of unknown, do we give thanks? Let's be like the pilgrims, they did. So what exactly did they celebrate? Ah, you know where I'm going, huh? Sukkot. They were here. They didn't have permanent dwellings yet. They were coming to a new land. They were pilgrims on a journey, you know, like wandering through the wilderness. And they were, came to set up permanent dwellings, to set up in this land, to grow and to plant and to occupy. Sounds kind of familiar. So they gave thanks during Sukkot. Feast of Tabernacles. And the Native Americans in that area actually joined in with them because they had also suffered that year and gone through things. And together, together, the Native Americans and the pilgrims who were coming to be able to worship God in truth in Scripture joined together and they helped each other survive and they gave thanks to God Almighty. Isn't that awesome? I think that's just awesome. Just awesome. So remember that when you celebrate Thanksgiving, that the roots actually go all the way back to Leviticus 23. Wow. Thanksgiving is like one of my favorite, favorite holidays. Remember, I said that we can celebrate things that aren't converted. I don't like that word. Um, or steeped or have roots in paganism. There's nothing wrong with that. But if they have a root in paganism, then they need to go away. It needs to, we need to not have any part of that because that's an abomination to God. So our American Thanksgiving is based in biblical principles, but let's not forget the root of it, Sukkot, which is where we're at right now. So today I want to encourage you, no matter what you're going through, whether you've moved to a new place and it's unknown, whether you have no permanent place, you're in between limbo, or whether you've gone through illness or death or whatever things that we go through, give thanks. Find something to be joyful over. It's called a sacrifice of praise, a sacrifice of thanksgiving for a reason. And we're commanded to give thanks during Sukkot. We're commanded to remember what he's provided and what he's done. So, I'm going to go to a verse that's actually um, in First Chronicles 16 and in Psalm 105. But I'm going to read it out of Psalm 105 because I'm going to read other verses too. First one: Give thanks to Adonai, to Yad Hey Vav Hey, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Call on His name. Make His deeds known among the peoples. Sing to Him. Sing praises to Him. Talk about all his wonders, glory in his holy name. Let those seeking Adonai, yet Vafe, have joyful hearts. It's a choice. It's not due to our circumstances. It's a choice. Seek Adonai and his strength. Always seek his presence. Remember the wonders he has done, his signs and his spoken rulings. Remember and observe. Okay. I hope you're enjoying the great outdoors. Be it you get to go camping. Be it you're under an umbrella or you've actually built a sukkah. Remember his holy days. Remember this feast of tabernacles. Maybe tomorrow we'll get into, or in the next couple days, we'll get into what we're looking forward to with the feast of tabernacles. All right, have a good day.